You're listening to the Health Coach Nation podcast. My name is Haley Rowe, and I'm a business coach for online health coaches who want to attract their ideal clients, stop feeling defeated by their never-ending to-do list, balance a healthy lifestyle with their growing business, and stop overanalyzing what everybody thinks of them so that they can confidently own their message and online presence. On this podcast, we dive deep into health information you can share with your clients, business strategy tips, and more. Let's get to it. Hey there, I have some warnings before we get into today's episode. So really important that you listen to this part. Otherwise, the episode's going to be like, what? So here's the thing. Today's episode is a little video clip from day one of my three-day consistency challenge that took place in the Health Coach Nation Facebook group. And it was a limited time offer, but I've decided that... I'm going to keep this one for the podcast and keep it for the group because there are still people finding value in it. A lot of you guys are saying you still want to go watch the replays. And so I just thought it's good to keep it. And you're going to notice that I'm talking to certain people who were engaged in the live challenge and I'm offering prizes and all of these things. And so if you're confused or you have questions about the episode, you can always email me at info at tayleyrow.com and make sure you join the Health Coach Nation Facebook group so you don't miss the next one because the prizes like Energy Bits, Algae, which is what I talk about in the video, and the cookbook are already gone. They've already been given away. This is old news. But the um, scheduling of a free assessment call is still available to you. And the early bird spots for the group program, some of those are still available. So if you do want to take advantage of that, you can schedule a free strategy call at HaleyRow.com or you can go to HaleyRow.com slash strategy hyphen call and you'll be able to fill out the goals form for that. But I just wanted to give you all of these updates and I hope you enjoy day one of the three-day consistency challenge. And if you'd like me to share the other two days, let me know. You can leave a review on the podcast. You can message me on Instagram at Haley underscore row and we'll get started. Today is day one of the three-day consistency challenge. I cannot wait for Instagram. I'm sorry you got to look up my nose. For Facebook, you get me full on. And for Facebook as well, you're going to have access to the prizes, the early bird discounts, all the good stuff. So we are here at day one of the three-day consistency challenge. And so what I want to know from you guys are a few things. First of all, what are you trying to be more consistent with? What kind of coach are you? Because you never know who's reading the comments. So share what you do. Feel free and be sure to connect with other members in the group. That's what it's for. Um, and we'll dive in to day one. But first, I want to go over a few ground rules, a few um, things about what's going to be happening the next three days in this Health Coach Nation Facebook group. And that is the following. So first of all, the next three days, I'll be going live once a day. I posted the times that I'll be going live in the group. And so be sure to check that. And if you're here live, and if we get 100 comments on the video, I will be doing some fun giveaways. My first day one giveaway is the Primal um, ki Primal Kitchen Cookbook. And then tomorrow's prize is a bag of energy bits, which is $120 in value. And then day three, I think I have a little spa pack um, that I'll be giving away. So you must live in the United States to qualify, but how do you get the prizes? Let's talk about that first and just get that out of the way and then we can dive into the content. How do you get the prizes? You have to be in the Health Coach Nation Facebook group. You have to be commenting and engaging on the videos. And you have to share the group and why you like the group, um, either on your Instagram, on your Facebook page, however you want to do it, and tag me. That's about it. So engage, and we want to get to 100 comments to be able to qualify. So pay, and not meaning you are commenting 100 times, but we get to 100 comments on the video, okay? So um, that's the first part. The second part is, um, as part of this three-day event, which is going to be a lot of fun, I am offering um, free strategy calls for participants in which you will also, if you book your call this week, so you don't have to talk to me this week, but you have to book your call for next week, this week, to be able to get $500 gift voucher 
for my one-on-one -on -one coaching or my group program, which is launching in, in July. So um, if you need, after this video, what I'll do is I'll post the link to book your call. I'll post uh, my newsletter list in case you want to get updates about the replays for this and um, all that good stuff. So those are the ground rules. Do you have any questions about that for now? If you're watching the replay, you can do hashtag replay and, and ask any questions you need. Okay, so now we know the ground rules, you know uh, what we're doing, and we're going to talk about consistency and how to start adopting the principles of consistent people. So, hi, Patrice, thank you for joining us. And um, I want to know from you guys what you need to work on the most. So if there's something you, ha you have a question about as we go, just let me know. Okay, we're diving in. I'm so excited. The first thing before we get into day two, which is going to be about excuses and mindset, we first just have to talk about what you actually want to be consistent with and get really clear on it. So the principles of consistent people. For those of you who don't know me, I also forgot to introduce myself. My name is Haley Rowe. I'm a business coach for health coaches and coaches, and I work with them on booking clients they love and setting up their online marketing strategies to convert and to get results. Um, so the first principle of consistent people is they start somewhere, right? So everybody, what, what I tend to see among people who struggle with consistency is they're using perfectionism as a little bit of a cop-out, meaning they're saying, I don't really want to adopt a new habit or um, try something new unless I know I'm going to be really, really good on, at it, unless I know the timing is going to be really, really good, unless I know completely fully what I'm doing and feel knowledgeable, you know, all of that. And so what I want, what I encourage my clients to do is um, meet yourself where you're at in the beginning. So one of the things that I'm going to be going over in the group program, the group program that's launching in July, it's called the Zero to Hero Health Coaching, um, or it's Zero to Hero Health Coach, and it's a 12-week program about how to find clients, how to book clients, how to create systems in your business, how to manage your time if you have another job while you're trying to grow your, your side business, the mindset stuff. And we're going to be going through all the strategies in that. But one of the strategies I always talk about with my clients and that I've learned from my coach and my group programs is every day you have to be consistent with building your network, with building potential clients um, who you want to work with and building relationships and being a people person, being in the business of people, right? So comment below if you feel like you're consistent with networking and reach outs. Um, but I'm going to use that as an example of one consistent habit that I've built and how I did that. So when it comes to setting aside for me, I aim for two hours a day. I don't always hit that target, but that's my goal to be consistent with two hours of building relationships every day with my potential clients, following up with people. That is one of my non-negotiables. And in order to start building that habit, I had to meet myself where I was at. I had to say, you know what? I um, right now, I'm only at one hour, and I need to up it to one and a half hours first and stick with that for a week, and then the next week I can add two. You know what I mean? So if you're new to building a certain habit, one of the things people don't like to do is say, I'm a perfectionist, I want to be perfect, I want to skip the, you know, skip steps and just step into being perfect when it doesn't work like that. And you have, the sooner you allow yourself to accept the fact that you're going to have to meet yourself where you're at first and start and make some mistakes and give yourself buffer time and buffer room, the sooner you'll get results. One of my favorite sayings of all time it, from Elizabeth Benton, who's like another personal development person, is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Because what happens so often, and you guys as health coaches, you probably see this with your clients all the time too. They want to jump into doing you know, a detox or a whole 30 or, um, you know, a, a strict like P90X or whatever, when they've never even gone for a walk in their life, or they've never even eaten a vegetable in their life. And it doesn't work like that, right? So you have to meet yourself where you're at. And here's how you do that. So in your business, I want you guys to ask yourself, what activities, what habits, if I was really consistent with, would bring the highest amount of results, would bring the biggest payoff. And in my program, I'm going to help you clarify that and share what's worked for my clients and myself. But 
for now, come up with something that you need to do to step it up. One thing. And for you, it might be, I need to step up networking and building my relationships every day. Okay? So let's say that's the thing you pick. Then you have to say, does this have a domino effect on other goals? So for example, if your goals are to, um, to make more money in your business, to work with more clients, to make a bigger impact, whatever, you know, get some really great testimonials, does that goal help smash the other goals? Yes, it does. So that's a sign it's the right habit to choose because it's just about, it's, it's about showing up every day, but it's about showing up with the activities that are actually worth your time, right? So ask yourself, does it meet the criteria of, is it going to kind of shoot two birds with one stone? Is it going to have multiple benefits and return on investment? Then once you decide, yes, this is totally worth it. This is a good idea. You have to ask yourself, okay, my future self would be doing this two hours a day, for example, but right now I'm at zero. So how, what's the next step to start stepping into my future self and evolving into that person? Um, what's my first target, right? So I really wanted to talk about the whole concept of your future self because I think I've been seeing it getting a lot of traction in the coaching world and, and people talking about how you have to be, be the person you want to be before you, you feel like you are them and you have to step into your future self and what would she do? And I love that concept. But at the same time, your current self is, is the person who has to start taking steps to becoming your future self. You can't just invade your future self's body and, and you know, say that, okay, all of a sudden I'm perfect and I do this every day and there were, there were no stepping stones or holes or swamps or whatever to get there. That's not how it works. Your future, you become your future self by doing small things every day, meeting yourself where you're at, making room for mistakes, deciding to start now and never quit, um, even if there's periods of time where you detour, right? That's what consistency means, and that what's, that's what consistent people do. They meet themselves where they're at, and they keep growing from there. So who here struggles with the whole perfectionism and impatience thing? Because we're going to talk about that a little more tomorrow, but I just want to know where you're at and um, who's struggling with that. Hi, Janae. Uh, not really need to work on that. Yes. Okay, so, and what consistency should look like? That's another thing. So. Somebody commented just now saying, I don't know what consistency really looks like. So you have, you, here's a good thing. You can define what consistency means to you and you have to decide the parameters. What are the exceptions? So for example, if you are trying to shoot for two hours of reach outs um, and you don't know what that looks like yet, or you don't want to do it, you know that it's unrealistic to say you're going to do it seven days a week. For example, you work in, you clearly define Here's the habit I'm going for. Here's the first target I'm going to go for for the next two weeks. Maybe it's an hour and a half and I'm starting to build up. Um, and here is the dates I'm not going to do it and give myself permission to not do it. Here are the exceptions of, you know, if I'm going to let it fall on the back burner or not. And this is what I'm committed to. Because so often we don't define that and then we get so mad at ourselves because we're not, we didn't do it seven days a week or we're just setting this unrealistic bar for ourselves. And then that doesn't work. So. Um, that would be what I would say to that. And one of my clients, like this is just to show you, um, and, and by the way, Paige, if you want to know what networking sh like means and how to actually do that, and where to find your ideal clients, um, the free strategy call, will we can talk about that. I know you already booked yours, so that's great. Um, thank you. And so anyways, going back to consistency and meeting yourself where you're at, that's the first principle. So slow down and, and forgive yourself for slowing down because how long has telling yourself you're just going to step into your future self and be perfect? Has that, has that been working for you? Yes or no? Probably not, right? So you have to start somewhere. Give yourself permission. And this, and the reason, here's the big reason why you want to do this, because it trains your brain to be like, this is almost too easy and I want to do more. This is almost too easy and uh, so I can easily stick with this. This is almost too easy, so building new habits is fun. Because instead, what we'd usually do is we cringe anytime we want to become a consistent person because we think it means giving up all the shit stuff, you know, making all these sacrifices um, and, you know, beating ourselves up mentally. We're prepared to beat ourselves up when we fail. And we, we tie new habits and consistency 
to all these unpleasant things, sacrifice, discipline, getting up at 5 a.m. It's no fun. I have to give up all this stuff. No, it can actually be fun. Start small. How can I make it easier on myself? Why, why do I really want to do this? How is this tied to my bigger mission? How can I make this something I look forward to? How can I ensure that I do this today? It, asking better questions, okay? So the next part is consistent people um, know what they want and they create a realistic plan. So for example, okay, you know what you want now. You've, decide, you've decided the exceptions, the parameters, etc. Now it's time to create a realist, realistic plan. So if you guys say, I want to start spending two hours a day on my business, for example, um, being consistent in my reach outs or my social media posts or my podcasts or whatever, um, you, what I would recommend doing is having a real look at your weekly schedule and why that's not happening already. So one of the things that I do is I use the app called Toggle, it's T-O-G-G-L. And it allows you to time how long you spend on things, okay? So it will allow you to, at the end of the week, get a summary of where you spent your time that week. And you'll be able to see what you can maybe outsource, what you can let go of, what you can do to make this more realistically fit into your plan. Okay, so another, like, this is really um, important that you do this because so often humans we underestimate how long things are going to take and how much effort things are going to take. And we overestimate uh, like what we can actually accomplish in a day. And when you do that to yourself, you're setting your brain up to not want to try new things, to feel discouraged from the start, to kind of sabot like not be on board. Okay. And we want to create, we want to create a plan for you that's going to feel really great. And you're going to feel on board, right? It's not so sexy. It's not so glamorous, but think about how far you'll be six months from now. If you start now and make room for buffer room and error and you're taught, you have your targets and your six month realistic plan or whatever, like that is key. Okay. So comment if you're enjoying this, comment if you have any questions, comment if you've ever used toggle. Um, I just want to know what is jiving and where I should skip tips and, and things like that. So, and remember, if we get to 100 comments on the Facebook video, somebody is going to win prizes every single day. Different people will be selected for each day of prizes. All right. So, um, and I'll announce all the prizes at the end of the week. Going back to creating a realistic plan. The next step is to ask yourself, okay, this habit is going to have a domino effect on a lot of my other goals. That's cool. But where do I want to be three months from now, six months from now, whatever? What are the results that I want to have? What, um, who is the kind of person who I want to be? What kind of habits do I want to have? And first, take a big macro look at that. And then what we do, what we're going to do in the group program is reverse engineer that into the weekly habits you need to have and things you need to be consistent with. Um, so that's, uh, it, it, like, do you guys have a plan? Comment yes or no for your business. Do you have a business plan? Do you, have, do you know where you want to be three months from now? And most importantly, because what happens is we, we set these goals and then we say, say it and forget it, do you know what habits and what things you need to do strategy-wise consistently to get to those goals? That's the real question. And become the kind of person, consistent people are very much focused on how they can meet their process goals that get them to the results. So instead of just focusing on the results and being like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm dreaming big, I'm shooting for the stars. Consistent people say, step back and say, okay, the habits I need are this, this, and this. The one I'm really focused on is this one. When I'm doing it is at this time. It's scheduled in. I know my just the way I get distracted. I know the way, I know what's gonna get in the way of this process. And I'm going to set myself up to avoid those things or to make it easier for myself or outsource or whatever, right? So you have to get real with yourself about that stuff. Most people, most people, and I'm eating my words, most people never want to get real with themselves about the real process it takes. But you should get more excited about the process and the little daily tasks that are getting you closer to the big goal than the actual goal itself. Because that's when your brain is on board with you creating new consistent habits. Otherwise, your brain's just focused on this future thing. It's not really like it doesn't see the full picture. It's kind of uh, aware that, you know, you want something, but you're not really 
you, you don't feel like you're making progress. But if you can get so satisfied with the daily process and the little principal things that are essential to becoming a consistent person and building new habits, you're going to be in good shape. It's all about retraining our mind to be like, this is so fun. And this is going to be, you know, this small action is what's taking me to the next step. This small action is so satisfying because I know it pays off. You have to retrain your brain to think that way. But most people think it's too small to make a difference. It doesn't matter if I do it today. Why do I need to do this today? It's a Sunday. We are convincing ourselves constantly of why we don't really need to do it. But that's no fun. Okay, that, that gets our brain in the wrong direction. So yes, I need to figure out those small actions. Somebody's downloading Toggle. I love that, Joyce. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, let's just keep moving through. So how are you guys doing so far? Okay, I want to give you another, a little story about realistic planning really quick before we move on to the next thing. And that is one of my clients only has about an hour a day to focus on her business. And one of the things that we talked about is what's going to bring the highest results for that one hour of time. And we created a realistic plan for her. So like Mondays is batching content day. Tuesday is um, reach out day. Wednesday is, you know, whatever, like um, going live in your Facebook group and supporting your Facebook group, all of that stuff. And we laid out an actual timeline that's super realistic given what she has going on to have a group program in 10 weeks. So ask yourself, what's doable. And if you only have an hour time, I don't want to hear that it's not possible for you to start your business and it's not po it's too small to make a difference because that's not true. Everything starts somewhere. Everything starts small and builds. You are going to build momentum and want to spend more time on your business and get more time because you're getting more clients and success. And it just is a revolving door of momentum. Okay. That's the first thing. Other thing I wanted to say is um, really important. So Consistent people um, are aware and know how to make themselves want to do the new habit and not want to do bad habits or self-sabotage habits or procrastinate. They start to learn how to make procrastinating, um, overeating, bad habits not feel fun for them anymore. And here's how you do that. This is the gold of today creating pattern interrupts, okay? So what this means is a lot of us, when we say we want to be consistent and we have all these things we want to do in our lives, but we're not doing them, it's because we have not yet broken the cycle of what we're so used to doing on autopilot. And what pattern interrupts are is, let's say, for example, I wanted to do two hours of reach outs, but every time I sit down to do them, I start scrolling through Facebook, I turn on the television, um, I start petting my cat, whatever, right? And I don't end up doing it. Okay, so what I would do is I say, okay, I gotta break this cycle and I gotta get focused. So what I'm gonna do today to start creating a pattern interrupt to tell my brain, hey, this isn't cool anymore. This isn't, this shouldn't be allowed or fun for you. So what I'm gonna do is go to my favorite coffee shop and do them there so I'm not distracted by the TV or my cat, oh, for example, okay? So you have to create ways to hold your own self accountable by doing these pattern interrupts things and make the new habit more fun. So I'm making the new habit of doing my networking more fun because I'm at a different environment. It kind of feels fun in there. Everybody's focused and working. Um, and I don't have the TV even as an option. So it's it's fixed, right? So how can you create a pause before you go and do that self-sabotage thing that's keeping you inconsistent and not just dive right into the what you do on the regular, you know, at, that kind of thing. And it's really uh, hard to, it's going to feel bad the first times you do it. It's going to feel really unnatural. It's going to feel like you're sitting on your hands and you're sitting with uncomfortable feelings. But the question is, what are you willing to feel in order to become a consistent person and build the long-term life that you want? Are you willing to feel awkward for a few days? Are you willing to feel really uncomfortable a few times? Are you willing to you know, let it pass because you know that that's one rep more towards building the consistency that you want? Comment yes or no. Comment yes or no. I want to know. <clears throat> 
People are watching on Instagram too, but Instagram, you guys have to join the Health Coach Nation Facebook group to get prizes, to get love from me. I do love you on Instagram, but I can't comment and interact with you. It's just, you got to go to the Health Coach Nation Facebook group, but you can watch from here for now. Okay, Facebook, are you still with me? What's going to be your pattern interrupt? And I'm going to use, for those of you who are health coaches, because I, I love health coaching too, I started out that way, that's my roots. When you have a client, for example, who says, I can't stop overeating, it's a habit, I, I just turn on autopilot, I turn on the TV, I'm eating nonstop, the bag's gone, but you know, I don't even know what happens. Here's what you do for that. Here's an example of a killer pattern interrupt. You say, you are totally allowed to overeat and keep doing that, but now, this time, the next time you do it, you have to take out a piece of paper, and while you're eating, or you know, pause in between a bite, and you have to write down how you're feeling, what's going through your head right now, why you think that this is happening, um, you know, like uh, thoughts going on in your head. Like you just have to download your thoughts on a piece of paper while you're doing it. That's all. You could still keep eating, but you have to at, at least now create a pause in your brain so you know you're doing it and you know you don't want to do it anymore. And it's not so fun to keep overeating when you have to also write down all this stuff on a piece of paper, right? So that's the first thing that I would say. Um, all right, so now who else do we have here? Only having the tab open that I'm actively working in. That is a beautiful pattern interrupt, A plus. Yes, I am so big on that. One of my things too, to make myself stop working at night and have a cutoff time um, is shutting down my computer every night. No allowing it to just sleep. I have to shut down all the windows for the next day and start with a clean, fresh slate. Um, so I love that. That was a really good one. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay, so now let's move on. Okay, so you're gonna write down, here's what I want you to do after today so far. Number one, pick the one thing that's gonna have the domino effect over your life that you wanna be consistent with. Number two, ask yourself, what does this really mean? What, what does consistency mean to me for this habit? Does it mean every day? Does it mean twice a day? What are my exceptions? Whatever. Part three, what are the pattern interrupts to, to stop doing the thing you wanna stop doing um, that you're going to choose to, to implement first. And then the fourth thing is tracking. So either using Toggle or a Goal Streaks app to see how often you're doing the new habit. Um, Goal Streaks app is free. That would be like if you had a goal to work out every day, you could just check off if you did it or not. Movement, if you did it or not. And over the months, you'll be able to see if you're building a streak. So you can start with one day and then take a break. Then build up to two days and take a break. Or you can just shoot for whatever target you're going for and over the months and years see how you're doing with that. Um, toggle is more of a time goal. So if your goal is two hours of reach outs, you can time it and see if you're hitting your target every week. Deleting social media apps when I'm done with social media that day. Ooh, that's another good pattern interrupt to not be scrolling on social media. So good. Okay, now moving on. Let's talk about the next principle for people who are consistent, and that is they are committed to figuring it out. So you guys, a lot of times we convince ourselves all the reasons why we can't do things, um, why it's going to be hard, blah, blah, blah. But consistent people understand that, yeah, it might be hard. Yeah, it might be tired some days. Yeah, I'm probably not going to feel like doing it a lot of the time, but I can figure it out. But I'm going to plan ahead. But, you know, here's what I can do. So I want your new mantra to really be, I can figure it out. Because that mantra is super realistic. It's not like, I am a, like a manifesting goddess, right? We're not stepping up to that yet. We can just say, I am really good at figuring things out. And I am committed to this new habit. And whatever I got to figure out, I will. If I have to outsource something, I will. If I have to um, bomb, this is another one. Give yourself permission to bomb certain things in order to make room for this new habit that's super important to you. Um, that would be another example. So how are you going to figure things out? And regarding the bombing uh, certain things, that comes from a book called Finish by John Acuff. And one of the things he says about why we can't reach our goals is because we're, we have all these conflicting things. Like I want to be a killer coach focusing on building my new business, but I also want to, um, you know, work only two hours a week and start out with everything automated and 
travel the world while I'm doing like it, it conflicts, right? So you have to be willing to bomb certain things to make room for whatever habit is most important to you. And I always say you can have it all, but you can't have it all at once. Yes, you can have balance in your life. Yes, you can hang out with your family and have a business and have, you know, all the stuff. But you have to set times where you don't have it all at once. <laughs> and you are creating boundaries for yourself and giving yourself permission to bomb certain things to make room for other things. Okay, so the other thing I would like to share with you um, is regarding figuring it out. It is so much nicer to figure it out with help and accountability and a tribe. And that's what I'm trying to create in this Health Coach Nation Facebook group and with the group program coming out this summer. So yeah, is, is support necessary, you guys? No, it's not, right? You can do anything by yourself if you really wanted to. You can figure anything out by yourself. We have the internet, we have your brain, <laughs> all the answers are within. But isn't it nice to have accountability and people who are supporting you and somebody who really cares and somebody who's a high touch coach or you know somebody who's done it before, you can ask questions or have a look over your work or whatever? Probably. So set, ask yourself, how can I be nice to myself? How can I make this not miserable? And not like I'm white knuckling it the whole time. Because the more you can, like happy people get the results that more often that they want because they're more driven to do things. So if you're unhappy on the journey and you're alone and you're white knuckling it and you feel unsupported and you're like, uh, it's going to be harder, no doubt. And you might, you know, trip up more versus if you had somebody, if you could like turn off your park, it's like, let me back up. It's like, when you don't have support and accountability and clarity and structure, you are going for consistency by yourself with like driving with your parking brake on. Your mindset's not in the right place. You feel alone. You feel scatterbrained. You're like, whoa, you know, I'm just, I'm just hustling. I'm just grinding. But when you have support, when you have structure, when you have, you know, somebody who can help and look over your work and give you the right direction for the week. It's like turning off your parking brake. Oh, and mindset. If you get your mindset in the right place, then you get out of your own way. It's like turning off your parking brake and driving much more smoothly. Is there still going to be a few potholes on the road? Yeah. But you at least have somebody in the passenger side like, okay, here's how we navigate that. Oh, turn left. Oh, turn left. <laughs> okay. So I hope my analogy makes sense. But the bottom line is, Make how can you make this easier on yourself? How can you figure it out in a way that doesn't feel like white knuckling and torture? And how can you make it a happy journey? Because always I always say happy journeys lead to happier results. Okay, the next thing is um, ask yourself these questions: What am I going to like about this journey? What excites me about this journey? What am I so excited to learn? What and and thinking like if you can get your thoughts on that track and on the like that road, it's so much better than having thoughts of scarcity when it comes to building new habits. Like, what am I going to avoid to make this happen? What am I going to, um, why, why is this going to be hard? When you're asking yourself those kinds of questions, that comes from scarcity mindset. And that's not the way you want to build new habits. Because again, it shoots, it gets your brain thinking, oh boy, here we go again. It's that all or nothing path. We're going to have to be mean to ourselves and, you know, all this. Okay. Okay. The other thing is I want to separate. So consistent people, this is the last thing. Consistent people um, are able to have certain feelings and emotions, but separate that from their actions sometimes. Right? So here's the thing. What happens a lot of the time is we think I'm tired. So that is driving me to not eat healthy or I'm tired. So that means I get a free for all. Like I don't have to do my work today. Or, um, I did two hours of reach outs yesterday. So that is shining the halo effect on today and meaning and making me feel like I don't have to do that right, right now. Um, so what we want to do instead is say, I'm tired. That's one thing, this habit and this thing that I'm trying to do consistently is going to have to be done on the tired days. It's going to have to be done on the happy days. It's going to be have to be done on the days I feel motivated. It's going to have to be done on the days I don't feel motivated. There's two separate things. And 
as coaches, we always have to be coaching ourselves through the barriers. Today I feel tired, yes, and I'm still gonna do my reach outs. Today I feel tired, and I'm gonna find a medium, um, what, what would be a moderate approach to my two hour reach outs. Today I'm only gonna do 30 minutes, for example. Um, that's an example of meeting yourself where you're at, still staying consistent, and not giving up on yourself versus what most people do is I'm tired and the, all bets are off. I'm, I'm all or nothing. That's what I'm doing today. And I'll start again tomorrow. Because if you're going to promise me one thing during this challenge, please promise me that you will stop saying I'm going to start over and you will stop quitting on yourselves. Consistency means still making mistakes, still having days where you miss it, still having days where it's not perfect or not the full amount of time that you wanted to dedicate to something, but it means that you are figuring it out and committed to asking what happened, what went wrong, well, how can I improve it for the next time, what, um, what will I do to make sure that next time I do better. That's what consistency means. It means committed to continuous growth and investigating why you didn't do something or what's getting in the way and getting help and addressing it. Um, so what does consistency mean to you? I would love to know you guys. Um, okay, how are we doing on Instagram over here too? You can ask questions as well. Uh, right. The last thing, a few questions. Okay, okay. Consistent people are aware that there's gonna be mistakes on their way to their goals. And most of us don't like to admit that. Perfectionist people, inconsistent people, just keep thinking the next time it will be perfect. Like how often everybody raise your hand if you've told yourself before, oops, I made a mistake. Oh, well, next time I swear to God, this is going to be the time that I get it right. And then you move on with your day. Did that solve anything? No. Right. So that's why we're, that's why we're creating the pattern interrupts. And that's why we're doing these asking ourselves these questions and you can even journal these questions every day to set yourself up for success those that's kind of some of the stuff that i'm talking about so some questions you can just start asking yourself is if i was the kind of person who um you know was committed and consistent what would be my first step where would i start from if i was the kind of person who knew how to network and do my reach outs or whatever the habit you want to have is what would i do then um, um, and like I said, what will I like about this journey? Uh, all that stuff. Okay. So somebody else says consistency means not giving up. Just like you said. Yes, exactly. Okay. Finally, the last thing is you have to learn how to be a little less conditional. So you know how I said you don't want to let your emotions just determine whether or not you're a consistent person. Um, and while it is easier to set yourself up for good emotions by, you know, a morning ritual and good feeling thoughts and working out and all that stuff, some days it's just not going to, you're not going to be in that mood, right? So you, you have to not tie your mood to whether or not you do the thing. And you have to con condition yourself to plant the seeds and be um, focused on the long term, like by being committed to the short term daily process. Um, so that you can harvest your seeds. So I don't, well, the other thing that if you promise me one thing today that you also will not beat yourself up if you make a mistake, because that again, conditions your brain to be like, oh, I hate setting new habits. Oh, this is going to be so hard, right? So next time you mess up, instead of beating yourself up, coach yourself through it. What can I do differently? Why did this happen? What was I seeking to feel from not doing this thing or from self-sabotage or whatever? And what can I do to make room on my plate to improve this for the next time? Um, all right, so, and how can I create the feeling that I wanted to feel in a different way that's not self-sabotage or being inconsistent from this habit that I wanna have, right? Okay, so who has questions, anybody? We're almost done. Um, I just want to say that the last thing when it comes to consistency is mistakes aren't aren't failures. They're just detours. And you can always get back on track with the good, better, best scale. So this is another thing that I've learned from um, a few podcasts and um, Elizabeth Benton. And it's the scale of good choices, better choices, and best choices. So let's say your best choice 
will be the habit of doing two hours of, of your networking or two hours of your, you know, um, whatever it is that you want to be doing better every week. But this week you didn't hit that. So what would, what's your definition of better? Like it's still pretty good and you're willing to have that on weeks that are really just tough. And then what's your good scale criteria? What would, what's good, better, and best for you? And can you stay within that scale for your habit that you want to create and be consistent with so that you're never feeling like you're inconsistent because you're always somewhere along the lines of the good, better, best scale, right? So it gives yourself permission to not be perfect, but it also clearly defines what you're aiming for and what consistency means for you on that scale. Okay, so um, make sure that after this video, you guys uh, do the tasks, meaning write down what you wanna be consistent with, all that good stuff share the group or the video on your feed and tag me and um and then comment here and be in the group on facebook and you'll be entered to win the prizes and also book your free strategy call so that we can dive deeper into this stuff and you can still get the special offer going on this week with the group program and private coaching 500 of the dollar gift voucher i can't talk 500 dollars gift voucher okay so does anybody have questions what were your biggest takeaways from this today? Let's just review. Consistent people are aware there's going to be mistakes and they either prepare for them or they address their mistakes instead of um, making mistakes just feel cozy by saying, next time I'll be better. They don't brush off mistakes like that anymore. They make bad habits feel uncomfortable. They make good habits feel really fun and exciting all the time, <laughs> even on the days when it's not feeling new anymore. They're committed to the process. Consistent people set themselves up for accountability, for success, for making it easier on themselves instead of driving with their parking brake on all the time, okay? So they're not spending their mental energy on beating themselves up. They're not spending their mental energy on why it's going to be hard or annoying or whatever. They're focused on envisioning their best life for themselves, stepping into their future self first by being loving themselves as they are, defining a small win and step in the right direction and doing it consistently with the same level of enthusiasm every day over time. And even on the days they don't feel like it, they are committed to figuring it out. Um, consistent people, yes, have a good, better, best scale. So they know they're in the vicinity of what they want. If they're doing, if they're somewhere on the good, better, best scale, and it's never an all or nothing, right? And consistent people, uh, start start from where they're at. Create a realistic plan and time block. Ooh, time block. If you don't schedule in what you want to be consistent with, good luck. It's not going to happen. Um, and yes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to come, at, to, come tomorrow at 11 o'clock central time because I'm going to be talking more about um, like excuses. So we're going to pinpoint each excuse like I don't have time or I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what habit I should be consistent with or I don't have enough information about it. That excuse, the excuse of uh, it's too expensive to invest in myself for this habit to become a thing or whatever to get results. Like, we're going to go through each excuse. So if you have an excuse that you keep telling yourself about one of the habits you want to have and, and something you want to be consistent with, but you're just not doing it, comment what that is today on this video because um, that way I'm going to be able to plan accordingly for tomorrow's video. Okay. So without further, uh, any further questions, I will be back tomorrow and I'm going to put the hashtag three day challenge in each video so that I'll leave the, the replays up for a little bit and um, you'll be able to go back to them if you need to. All right. Thank you guys. Any final questions? Any final questions? Who wants to win a prize? You guys, if you guys want to learn about one of the prizes, which is algae, it's energy bits. It's really good for your health. And it, I have a podcast episode on it. Um, Haleyrow.com slash algae, A-L-G-A-E. And it's $120 in value. Um, you can check out my blog with the founder of that company to learn more about why it's good for you.
Okay, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good day. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Be sure to get your free gift over at HaleyRowe.com by joining my email list. And remember, you can always connect with me and other health coaches in the Health Coach Nation free Facebook group where I post trainings and videos on how to take your health coaching business to the next level. Can't wait to connect with you. Have an awesome day.